Hello Year 5 and welcome to your video looking at this is the first video um, of wider curriculum for you in autumn one and we're going to look at some of the vocabulary you will be needing in this year's topic lessons which are about geography. So the first thing you will need to be able to look at is if you remember from our very first lesson um, when we looked at the shape of the earth we need to know where the equator is and what the equator means. The equator is that imaginary line that goes around the middle of the earth um, halfway between the north and south poles and it divides the world into the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Latitude. Lines of latitude me measure the relative position north or south on the earth's surface. So they are the lines that go round the earth going um, east to west um, because they measure where on the earth you are going north to south. So latitude go round, um, longitude goes up and over. So of course the lines of latitude always remain in parallel. They're not really there on the ground, but they're useful to help uh, us people know where and to locate things on the earth's surface. Now the lines of longitude um, are the distance uh, they go from east to west, they go from the North Pole to the South Pole, but obviously they are not parallel because as the Earth curves round, they curve round, so they actually meet at the North Pole and meet at the South Pole. Um, so they are a kind of distance, you can measure the distance east and west, um, and it always starts from nought degrees, which cuts through London at the Greenwich Meridian. So you work it out from London, that's because of the first people to do the mapping in the modern world were based in London, in England in the 17th century or 18th century. Um, the tropics are the lines, uh, the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn are um, two of the five major circles of latitude that mark maps on the earth. Um, so you've got the Arctic Circle, the Antarctic Circle, the equator, and then the tropics. And obviously it's between the tropics that our tropical rainforests are. Wow, what are tropical rainforests? They are woodland typically found in tropical areas, as I've just said, with an annual rainfall of at least 100 inches or 254 centimetres. That's two and a, over two and a half metres. So an awful lot of rain falling um, on those areas. They're really rich in biodiversity. Lots and lots of different kinds of animals and plants and insects and birds live there. Um, they are marked by la lofty, i.e. very, very tall, like skyscraper tall, um, broadleaf evergreen trees, which form uh, a continuous canopy. And we've talked about the different layers and canopies in a rainforest. Um, a tsunami is a Japanese word, which means harbor wave. Tsunamis are giant waves, often caused by an earthquake under the ocean. And I'm sure as we read through our class text this year, which is obviously Michael Maporgo's book, um, we will learn a bit more about tsunamis and the impacts they can have. Um, as we've seen in one of the lessons, they're caused by an earthquake under the earth and then the wave happens. Biomes, now we've covered biomes in quite a lot of depth. These are areas of our planet marked with a similar climate, landscape, animals and plants. So we talk about the, bio, um, the tropical rainforest biome because across the different rainforests, they have very similar climates, landscapes, animals and plants. The habitat is the home of any animal that feels comfortable in it. So um, the habitat of the tiger, for example, the Sumatran tiger, for example, is the Sumatran rainforest. That's where it lives, that's where it uh, thrives, and that's where it, it, uh, it is. So that is its habitat. Now, we're also going to be looking at river flows and the water flow, um, the water circle, uh, life cycle, um, as as it impacts on the tropical rainforest, because actually there are different cycles working together in the tropical rainforests. Now you should have covered this before, but the source of a river is the very, very start, where the river starts to flow, where the water first bubbles out of the ground, and that's usually high up in the mountains. The mouth is where the river ends, where the river reaches um, a lake or the sea. Um, a tributary is a small stream or smaller river that flows into the main river. Erosion is the wearing away of and breaking up of the rock and or the soil as the river comes through. So the river is eroding um, away the rock and the soil as it moves down uh, towards the sea. Deposition is a geological process in which the sediments, um, the stuff that's in the water, when the water loses power, 
um, drops it, so it literally deposits it on the land or under the river, um, so it creates new landform, if you like. So river transportation processes, solution is where the minerals are actually dissolved into the water. So a bit like when you have a hot cup of tea and you put the sugar in and you stir it, the sugar disappears, it is dissolved into the water. And certainly some nutrients um, do that in the water in the rivers. Suspension is where really light material is actually carried along in the water um, because the water is traveling so fast, it's got energy, it's able to lift up and carry small bits of, of grit or, or um, small bits of nutrients actually in them. So they're not actually um, saluted into the water, but they do actually get carried along. Saltation is small pebbles and stones that are bounced along the riverbed. So the river doesn't have enough power to lift them up and carry them, but it can kind of push them and bounce them along the riverbed. And traction is when large boulders and rocks, uh, the same thing, but with large boulders and rocks are pushed. So the river might have so much force, maybe in a storm, that it's really pushing um, the uh, boulders along the bottom, and that's called traction. So that's the end of our definitions on geography. Uh, I hope you learn them well, because you will be using them in our geography lessons. Goodbye.